So, I've been doing some renovations to create my dream gothic bedroom and office. And I'm gonna need somewhere to store my supplies and tools. That's where this baby comes in. I got this old cabinet at a thrift store, and it's very well built, quite beautiful, despite the wear and tear, but it doesn't exactly fit the gothic style I'm going for in my workspace. So, it's time to transform it. Best place to start is by removing the hardware and setting it aside. Next is removing the cabinet doors. Now, these things are surprisingly heavy, so I had to make sure to unscrew the hinges carefully in a certain order to keep the weight of the door from warping or breaking the hinges. I left one of the top hinge screws for last and firmly held onto the door while I unscrewed it so it wouldn't fall. Then, I carefully removed all the drawers and set them aside. I also went ahead and removed the hardware from those as well. And with all those pieces out of the way, it's now time to give it a light sanding to help the paint stick to it better. This took a while to do by hand. And then, I wiped away all the dust and called it for the day. The next day, I came out to find some bugs and decided to use my freshly sanded cabinet as a playground. I didn't want to hurt them with any of the paint that I'd be using, so I persuaded them to leave and got back to work. To save money on spray paint, I like to paint large flat areas by hand. I probably could have used a bigger brush, but this was all I had at the moment. and my little sister decided to come supervise my work. After that, I let the paint dry. Luckily, I didn't have to wait long for that in the Texas heat. After allowing it to dry, I came back with the spray paint and covered the rest of the cabinet making sure to get into all the crevices and details, as well as lightly going back over the already painted sections for good measure.
With the body of the cabinet painted, it was time to do the same to the drawers and the hardware. I left the top of the cabinet unpainted so I could apply this black marble contact paper to it. After cutting off the amount I needed, I laid it out and carefully worked from one side to the other, smoothing it out and pressing it down, making sure not to leave any air bubbles. I then worked my way around the outside, pressing it down over the edges. With the edges visible, I took an X-Acto knife and cut away the excess material. After that, I went back over the edges of the contact paper and firmly pressed them down. Having long fingernails came in handy for this. To better hide the edges of the contact paper and make sure it doesn't peel off, I took whatever this thingeth is I found at Dollar Tree and applied it around the whole thing. The adhesive isn't the best, so there were some sections that didn't want to stay down properly. I just put a little bit of super glue on those parts and it kept them from going anywhere. I had quite a bit of paint left over from my room renovation, so I decided to use it to paint the inside of the cabinet.
I wanted to add some skulls to the project, so I made some using air dry clay and a plastic skull mold. Then with the clay still in the mold, I press it onto the square pyramid detail, or whatever you want to call it, on the front of the cabinet door so it'll sit flush after it dries. I also took this moment to do a bit of extra sculpting to add details and cut away the excess clay. I repeated this to make two skulls, one for each door, and I let them dry. Back to painting, I painted the doors black just like I did with everything else. Then using the paint that I used on the inside of the cabinet earlier, I lightly dry brushed the outside of the door and drawers. Here they are, fully painted. One of the drawers was supposed to have two knobs, but was missing one. So I went to the hardware store and got new ones. But they're boring, so we're gonna fix that. Using the same technique I used before, I made some more skulls, but tiny this time. I put a drop of E6000 glue in the middle to give it a strong hold, and some fast drying super glue around the edges to hold it until the E6000 dries. And placed each skull on the front of the knobs. Now, we're once again outside to spray paint all these skulls black. And the time has come to make all of this black hardware shiny and silver. To do this, I'm using silver rub and buff. Some people use paintbrushes for this, but with some projects like this one, I prefer to use my finger.
And here we have our shiny hardware. To attach the skulls to the front of the doors, I'm first sanding the tips of the square pyramid so the glue has more to grip onto. And much like I did with the tiny skulls on the knobs, I'm using E6000 glue in the middle with super glue lining the outer edges. And here's the cabinet, fully assembled. It looks plenty nice on its own, but I've also got this smaller cabinet that I modified a while back with black paint, some plastic garden fencing from Dollar Tree, and some green fabric. I measured and it looks like there's just enough space to stack this cabinet on top of the one I just finished. Of course, I don't want to scratch up the black marble contact paper, so I made sure to add these felt pads to the bottom. And with that, I now have the perfect place to store all my tools and, uh, the supplies that I'll need for my future gothic DIY projects. Projects that I hope you'll join me for in future videos, because I've got a lot of fun ideas to come. So if you've enjoyed and want to see more, hit the like button, drop a comment, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell. I'll see you all in future video.